Join Michael and I as we talk about some security fundamentals for SQL Server and Azure SQL. You're not going to want to miss this. This week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Michael. Michael, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. It's super exciting to have you on the show, and I know you work on the security for features, and yep. that's different from security features. So before we get into security fundamentals, tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, so my focus is, um, as you mentioned, sort of on the security of features. I mean, historically, when people think about products, and they think about sort of security features like anti-malware and firewalls and so on. I mean, those are all really important, but sometimes you just, just got to get the fundamentals right. And that's why I focus primarily on the security of those features as opposed to just straight security features. I mean, you could have a firewall with a security vulnerability in it, right? So I focus on hopefully not having those vulnerabilities in those, those products. Awesome. Us. Cool. Well, we're lucky to have you on the team um, and on the show. And today we're going to be talking about some security fundamentals because sure. we can't cover them all. No. But you know, for folks who don't know Michael Howard, like you're kind of kind of a big deal. So tell us a little bit about some of the things things that you do in the the public world. Yeah, I want to say I'm a big deal. My wife still <laughs> tells me to take out the trash, so <laughs> let's just move on. So um, yes, yeah, so I've been working on you know security in one way, shape, or form for a long time now. Um, very happy to be in the Azure Data Platform, um, again, working on security of features. So let's sort of move on to my, sort of what I want to cover. Um, so first and foremost, um, I'm a, one of the co-hosts of the Azure Security Podcast. Uh, that comes out every couple of weeks. So if you're not aware of it, please go ahead and sign up and listen to it. And also the co-author of Designing and Developing Secure Azure Solutions, which came out uh, end of last year. So really want, to, really want to sort of focus on some of the security fundamentals that I think are, are really important that people need to consider when they're rolling out databases. But before I get onto that, this is a picture of um, a monitor that, that I have in my office. It's actually right behind my camera. So when anyone's on a, when I'm on a Teams meeting, um, people see this. And it's all of these subliminal messages that um, that are there on the on the presentation, and it just rolls through all these various um, security best practices. Yeah, you know, whatever works, right? And it really is just fundamentals that people need to consider. And one of these, which has been around for a long time. Is all input is proven otherwise? And is all sorry? All input is evil until proven otherwise. Is one that I've talked about for a long, long, long time. But we're not going to cover that today. So we have all these security features in our various database products, and they're all incredibly important. But when you're designing something and building something on, say, Azure SQL Database, you've really got to think about some of these fundamentals. So let's focus on some of these and just look at some of the ones that I think are critically important. So the first one is TLS hygiene. So first and foremost, please stop saying SSL. SSL doesn't exist anymore. It is officially deprecated a long time ago. So SSL doesn't exist anymore. It's TLS. Um, the prime security feature or the quality of security, as it's sometimes referred to, that TLS brings to the table is server authentication. This is so amazingly important. Like You can't have a secure conversation unless you know what server you're talking to. Um, channel protections are important. Everyone thinks about TLS as being encryption, but that's only one of three sort of security features that TLS brings to the table. Um, there, it's important, but, but you can't have a private conversation if you don't know who you're talking to. And that's why TLS server authentication is so important. I've heard people say, well, you know, t sometimes server authentication or authentication is not important, but it is. And some people say, wow, well, what about, um, you know, say a whistleblower website? Authentication is still really important. You want to make sure that if you're doing, you know, you, you know, you've got a message to send, you want to make sure that the server you're giving the information to is actually the correct whistleblower website and not a rogue. That's critically important. But people lose track of that. We're not talking about client's authentication here. We're talking about when you connect to a server, how do you know it really is the correct server? Um, you, I, I really want to stress this. You cannot have a secure conversation unless you know who you're talking to. It's a little bit like whispering a secret to someone in a blacked out room, but you don't know who's in the room. Mm. Um, that's why it's so important. So some things that you can do. So first and foremost, as your SQL database does actually enforce TLS by default. It's an option that you can set there. And you can even set the protocol version. And the default will be TLS 1.2. 
And that certainly is the minimum that anyone should be going for. Um, SQL Server itself does have a few little more knobs and buttons you've got to press to enable TLS. Um, but the, you know, that's still really important. Um, make sure you configure SQL Server correctly. Uh, for example, don't use self-signed certificates and don't use trust server certificate equals true in your um, connection strings. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, there's a you know, generation or two of technical folks who think that clicking through a, you know, do you trust this certificate dialog box is okay. It's not okay, right? You, it's not up to the user to determine that. It should be something that's configured correctly. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details about PKI and what have you, but um, yeah, we, we taught a whole generation that self-signed certificates are okay and they're not. They're not okay. The analog I like to give is a little bit, a little bit like flying to South Korea and writing your own passport on the plane. I don't think the South Korean authorities are going to let you in the country. <laughs> yeah, we seem to do that every single day with self-signed certificates. And then for, um, for SQL Server, make sure that you enforce TLS at the server. It's not up to the client to determine whether you should use TLS or not. It's up to the server. And yet we don't do this. We have, you know, encrypt equals true in the connection strings. What happens if encrypt equals false in the connection strings? Are you going to be okay with a non-TLS, non-authenticated connection? Um, they should be up to the server to, to determine that, not the client. So really important there. What's the default? The default is no TLS at all. Mm. I'm not going to get into that whole discussion. I'll, I'll go on a bit of a rant. But... <laughs> okay, next one is using up-to-date libraries. If you're not aware, there is now Microsoft.data.sql client. You should be migrating from system.data.sql client. And the reason for that is that MDS is essentially a superset of, of SDS, of the system.data.sql client. But SDS is essentially on life support. Um, you won't see many major changes being made to SDS. Everything is being done in MDS, the Microsoft.data.sql client. The big major two aspects are support for T uh, TDS 8, Tableau Data Stream version 8, and you'll see why that's important in a moment. And the next one is also support for the Microsoft Authentication Library, uh, MSAL. Um, historically, um, uh, system.data.sql client supported what's called ADAL. That is also being deprecated. So you should use Microsoft.data.sql client instead. Um, the other important point, which I just sort of touched on, is that uh, M, uh, the Microsoft.data.sql client also supports TDS8, and that will give you TLS 1.3 support moving forward. Um, also, um, it deprecates trust server certificate. So essentially, trust server certificate equals false is, is the default, and you, you can't change it. So it's being much more strict on, on supporting TLS, which is, which is absolutely the correct thing to do. Um, next one is using Entra ID for client authentication. So we've switched now from server authentication, which is TLS, to Entra ID, which is client authentication. Now, there's a good reason for, for doing this. The main reason is if you take the zero trust ideas, and especially assume breach, so, so in an assume breach environment, you're basically saying, okay, the system's got whacked, now what? Well, in the case of Entra ID authentication, there is no password or no password identifier there. It's all handled by Entra ID. It's off over there somewhere. In the case of, say, SQL authentication, there is a password verifier that is maintained by SQL Server, which can be used by an attacker to do an offline attack. That doesn't even exist in Entra ID. So it's, it's almost plausible deniability, if nothing else. So from a zero trust assumed breach perspective, you really should be, you should really consider Entra ID. It also allows you to use things like conditional access, uh, multi-factor authentication, right? All this stuff is all provided by Entra ID. So definitely consider you know, what it takes to design a system using managed identities and Entra ID um, uh, identities as well. If you're using it on-prem, so you don't have access to uh, Entra ID, then uh, Active Directory accounts can be used as well. And again, there's no identifier maintained by SQL Server. It's all done by Active Directory in that case. And this is a conversation that I have a, a lot with developers when they're, you know, when they're using you know, some kind of SQL authentication mechanism or something. And the conversation usually goes something like this. You know, okay, so where do you store the password? Well, we store it in the con a connection string. Okay, well, where's the connection string? Well, it's stored in a configuration file. Well, where, you know, how is the configuration file protected? Well, it's encrypted. Okay, so where's the key stored? Well, it's held in key vault. Okay, well, who has access to the key vault? Then all of a sudden, the developer realizes that everyone has access to the, to the root key. 
And in security, we often refer to that as you know, turtles all the way down. So how do you protect the bottom? How do you protect the bottom turtle? So critically important. So these are just some of my things that I like to sort of focus on, just pure security fundamentals. Um, so quick wrap up, use TLS, not for the channel protections, it's for server authentication. You've got to know, your clients have got to know that they're talking to the correct client, the, the correct server and not a rogue. And that's what TLS gives you. Second one is using modern libraries, right? So you should be using, if you're writing C-sharp code, for example, managed code, you should be using um, Microsoft.data.sql client. Um, it's going to be updated more often than system.data.sql client. And it's basically a superset for the most part. And then the last one is using Entra ID for client's authentication because, again, if you look at it from an assumed breach perspective, there is no credential there and no credential identifier there that the attackers, the attackers can use. And also you're getting full advantage of things like multi-factor authentication, conditional access, et cetera, et cetera. Just some security fundamentals. If we had another, I don't know, six hours, <laughs> I could keep going, but we don't. And that tells me I don't. So uh, anyway, those are things that sort of top of mind right now. Yeah, absolutely. Michael, thanks so much for coming on the show. Personally, I learned a lot. I think our viewers learned a lot. And if they already knew this, this is a really yep. good, important reminder yes. for folks um, to, you know, we have great security new features we're working on, but making sure you have the fundamentals down is really absolutely. important. So absolutely. I think like everyone should go check out this book if you're working with Azure SQL or um, SQL Server on Azure. Um, and, and yeah, subscribe to the podcast. Super yep. interesting. Um, Michael, thanks so much for joining us again. Uh, to our viewers, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, and let us know your favorite part. And uh, we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs> <laughs>